Well, the guy's way down in Texas picking up this really cool 1935 Ford pickup truck. It's a nice mix between a hot rod and a rat rod. Of course, it doesn't currently run, and it's been off the road for many years. So I'm gonna do the right thing, try to get this thing running again, and cannonball it 630 miles back home. Seems fine. Nope. Terrible idea. If you've been watching the channel a while, you undoubtedly recognize this truck. I actually bought it about a year ago. I was down here in Texas, I found my dad's 56 Buick. I bought it back and tried to drive it all the way back to Wisconsin. And I stopped in here at Craven Customs. It's a shop that Lance, Wyatt, and family operate the restored and turn and rust channels. And I was here, saw the truck, fell in love with it, made a deal on the thing and it's been sitting here since they were kind enough to just basically store it for me. I didn't walk around it a lot. I just kind of, you know, yep, looks good. So I think that's where we got to start. I've got to pull this off in about two and a half days. I don't have a lot of time and a lot of work to do, so let's dig right in, walk around this thing, try to figure out what's going on. All that I can remember is it's Mopar powered. Yeah, that's, it's a real thing. Now, Lance and family didn't actually build this truck. They bought it, tinkered on it for a while, and basically decided to sell it. I don't have a lot of history on it. I have a little bit of information based on what they were given, which also isn't a lot, but I'll share what I can along the way. Basically, it's an unknown, homemade 35 Ford hot rod. One of the first things you're gonna notice here is it's complete which is really hard to find, especially in the 30s Fords and Chevys, basically all makes. One of the first things that goes is these beautiful sweeping fenders and they get stored and smashed and ran over by equipment and they're essentially lost to the world in a lot of cases, but this one is complete. The hood's even in decent shape. Front grille is beautiful. Hard to find in that good a condition. Now, of course, it's got rust holes here and there. It's full of dents, but listen, it's really old. It's hanging in there pretty good considering. A little bit more rust there, but the fenders are in excellent shape. Probably might could even be a candidate to put some real paint on it instead of the patinas, you know? This one's in great shape. We'll work our way around back. I like to start in the trunks, or in this case, the bed. We got battery box, rock powered, one cranking amp. We got the old rat rod keg fuel tank. Sure. I guess that's where the sad cable goes. Right there. Free chairs. Maybe that's the interior. Not quite sure. Tailgate's a little rough. Looks like she's been repaired on a few times. You know, stick welding. Looks like 7018 rod or something like that. Probably rusted, yeah, same here. Bedside's in good shape. Another beautiful fender. Boy, these tires are old. I think them are painted on. Oh, no, this is the old flap disc the tire trick to get to make your own white wall works great for 13 days and then the stability and reliability of the tire goes away super fast another nice running board good complete truck obviously the top's been chopped on this and they do that by you know chopping out a section and bringing her down quite a bit might I say so there's gonna be a cut in here or a weld probably right in here there's gonna be one and across the back as well we'll take a closer look at that in a minute 
kind of a fairly decent job. If I'm being honest, I don't know how much Bondo's in this guy yet, but we're certainly going to find out. Of course, the doors have been cut up as well. It was a really popular thing to do. Some like it, some don't. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Do you like the chop tops? Bleep bloop it down there in the comments. Let me know. Now, you know, it's done. I guess I don't mind it so much, but personally, if I'd have a choice, I'd probably take just the original cab, complete original truck, but to each their own. Some really old school flame work. Hood's in pretty decent shape. It's really unfortunate they cut this up to fill the radiator up. Lost the other front hood pin section, maybe. We'll get this off in a second. Let's crawl in this thing, see what we got going on. Now this ought to be interesting. We've got a really long drive. Hopefully I fit in this thing comfortably. All right. Boy, she's low too. Oh yeah. There's actually a lot more room in here than a guy would have, you know, predicted. Based on accounts that, well, there's no seat. I'm sitting on the floor and there's a bar in my back. It smells like a wicker basket full of blankets. No, wet blankets. That's fine. Let me get you in here. It's, it's interesting. Surprisingly, this isn't all rotted out. Well, you guys down south really do have some good trucks. Solid metal. Reassigned vehicle identification tag. I actually do have a title for this thing, believe it or not. Here's the interior. There's not, you know, there's not a whole lot to it. This is kind of deceiving. It looks like there'd be foam on it until you sit. There's nothing here. There's just a bar up there, but that's probably why I fit. See, let me, let me try to get in. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's good. You just turn the whole steering column to steer. Got a Chevrolet speedometer panel thing in there. That's fine. Got some racing gauges, must be fast. Some weird homemade shifter stick looking thing. I don't know. It clearly gets full of water a lot. That's, that looks like a loaded diaper, but it's supposed to be a bug box. See, floors have been professionally patched. So that's pretty good. Boy, this thing's probably gonna be really loud going down the road. There's the chop. See that weld there? Well, there, there's a notch and right here across the ceiling. It's pretty interesting. Hmm. It's not too bad though, I'm gonna be honest. I even got a key for the thing. I don't know if I, nope, I'll wait. Let's wait to do that till last. We got a bunch of digitals hanging. I don't know what that does. I don't know what that does. How could there be so many wires in here? We don't got anything to operate. Oh, I bet that's supposed to be like headlights. Maybe. I think I just broke it though. That's fine. We'll pretend that didn't happen. Well, that's pretty much it. Let's get under the hood. See what we got going on in the power barn. You know, I think what a guy's gonna go on ahead and do is just take this whole thing off. I think we're gonna be rooting around in here anyway. So let's just get her out of the way. Easy, faster, gentler, easier. Mopar performances. Wow, this is a, this is a mess. What in the world? Am I looking? Is that a horn hooked into the... What? This is... That's fine. We'll all be dipped. What are we... What are we looking at here? I... Sure. Moparis's performance.
it's sure it's the flavor I'm gonna guess you know 318 360 we'll figure that out here in a little bit already seen a lot of homemade age stuff here's our steering that we're gonna you know put our life on that's this just not look at that anymore that'd be fine we got wires and hoses and zip ties did did I work on this I'm I must have I'm confused at this point if I'm being honest the old you know this the Mopar's ignition stuff wow that's some engineering there got a ballast resistor hanging off a zip tie over here it's a newer engine we got digitals I wonder if this was the Terminator broccoli injection and it's been flipped to the fuel make it happen or flavor not quite sure this is neat they just cut the frame out to get the oil filter in there huh. I mean it's all here though it looks complete all the hoses and do dabs lightning whirlers in it I mean it should be other than the overcomplicated ignition system needlessly everything is you know here it looks like oh yeah so the whole firewall flexes I bet when I hit the brake pedal that's just gonna come shooting through the wall is this a spark ladder it sure was plug in the vacuum leak I I did own this it's coming back to me now got some wires getting twisted up in the steering rack that's fine more wires down here getting twisted up in that it's got one of the rack don't give me opinion things for the steering stuff that's pretty neat aluminum radiator flexor light fan Psst. Psst. Craigslist rebuilt it's all performance you know what I mean what in the world how is is that is this gonna work huh okay that's there's the throttle <clears throat> all right temp gauge I mean we're gonna have to just drink this up for a while I think and just try to figure out what's happening you know what I mean that's still free at least huh I'm not seeing a TV cable or any identification of some sort of electro things for the shift machine down there so the transmission is unknown at this point now back here boy that kind of looks like a Firebird or third gen Camaro uh, rear end based on those housings there for that torsion arm torsion bar to tubi thing but we'll be able to tell a little bit better once we get this thing up in the air guy has not completed the automobile archaeology yet we're gonna get there as we go I just got to get wrenching on this thing but so far we've got a pretty decent 35 Ford shell mostly factory frame with some custom cross memberish a rack and opinions steering thing that doesn't look like it's gonna steer very well some sort of brakes that flex really bad a Mopar 318 or 360 we'll find out I'm assuming Chrysler transmission and maybe a third gen Firebird rear end guys gonna have to eventually get to tires wheels brakes when we get this up in the air we'll start identifying some of this stuff more but I'm gonna dig into this engine here I gotta hear this thing run so I know it's worth the time effort and money doing the rest of the stuff now one of the things that Lance did mention is the guy that he bought it from mentioned water did get into this engine and Lance also mentioned while well, he's had it water got into the engine as well and how that's happening is the crease in the hood you know goes right down the center of the fuel make it happener and when I saw it last time it didn't have this little scoopy thingy on it and the water just drips right down the fuel make it happener 
So I think before we try to rotate this or crank on it or do anything, let's pull the sparkulators out. Let's go ahead and just pour some juice in there, let it sit for a minute, and then I can start drinking in the rest of this while that's cooking. Probably throw a battery in it, get the engine to rotate slowly, and then we'll see if we can work towards getting this thing fired back up. Well, I hope it runs. It should. Nope. Well, the guy's got all the sparkulators out. AC Delco flavor. That's good. They're all consistent. Also great. I don't see any signs of physical damage. So I think we're going to be okay there. But also very consistent in how they were burning. And I don't see any bad, like, oil-fouled ones or anything like that. So, so far, great news. Now, I still want to lubricate this thing and maybe flush it and clean it a little bit, having been told there's water down there. Yeah, some of the pistons are going to be on top dead center. Some of them are going to be at the bottom. Most important thing for me is just lubricate that ring ridge wherever they're sitting right now. And then as it blows this stuff out, it's going to look like murder, she wrote around here. Rest in peace. Lost another good one. Anywho, I'm going to use some of this Mayo mist oil. I don't know what's in it. It's a mystery. How much do you want? More? Okay. Just going to work my way around. Fill all these up till it gushes out. And then later on today, I can lay in this while I'm changing the oil. <laughs> Great. All right, all the power pumpers is just topped off with the mystery oil there. I don't know what's in it. It's a mystery. I think while that's cooking, I gotta start digging into these digicals. And I don't like the voltages in the digicals, okay? But we're gonna have to get it done. I think uh, the next step, once we get new fresh ignition in here, Let's go ahead and see if the starter works, try to crank this thing over. So I'm going to start digging through this ignition system and just make sure that, you know, I'm getting 12 Vs where I need to get 12 Vs. This is the Mopar electronic ignitions systems, which as you can see is really simple. Actually, it is pretty basic. It's just kind of overcomplicated. So I'm just going to start digging through here, make sure I got 12 volt switch where I need that and everything. Field wires to the charge and whirler. It doesn't matter which one's which, just as long as one is 12 volt switch basically. I got to make sure that this little tiny wire is going all the way back to the battery. I don't, I don't really see it charging off of that to be honest. And then, uh, you know, kind of just, I, I'm procrastinating at this point. Also, while I'm sitting here, let's go ahead and check the Earl on this thing. Ooh, there might be, oh yeah, there's some water in there. 100% and gas, lots of gas. Okay, so if we hear this fire, we gotta pretty much turn it off immediately and drop the oil and change that, it's got a bunch of water and it's not good. We'll also see if any of this marble mithril leaks past the rings here down to the crankcase as well. Okay, back to digitals. Great. This is a very specific battery. It's for the Mopar and a Ford application. No, this is just a super start assist economy, you know, because it's cheap. And it's got the go handle basically. Get rid of the rock. I don't think I need that right now, anyway. Need to start by just throwing some juice on this thing. Seeing if we get any fires. I like to run what's called a fire test. Put this battery on here. Listen for any sizzles and sparks. Stuff shooting at you. Things like that. And then... <sighs> Drink it in. You know what I mean? See if you smell anything. Here we go. Oh, let's go this way. Another thing that's kind of concerning is there's already 15 wires hanging off of this. Where are they going? Only one ground. Anywho's, 
fire test is going well. It's just, it's this stuff that, you know, what, what are we doing here, you know? This one, I would assume, based on the thickness and the feeling, is the one that goes up to the charging whirler. This one is not hooked to anything. I don't know if it's supposed to be or what. We don't have any sort of body ground. It's grounded to the frame, so we'll have to check that out. But no fire yet, so I'm gonna turn my lawnmower key on, and then we can start chasing some of the digital. We can see the big gauge down there to the starter. This is that one I think goes to the alt. That's the other one. Goes into the dat. Okay. It uh, goes into the dash. Need that for something, you know. Oh, looks like they used to have a master cylinder up there, but boop, let's bring that down, you know. And uh, I'll start getting the test light out here and just start testing some of this. Great. Well, I just got done checking all of the digitals, which really there's not a lot in this truck, thankfully. So far, oddly enough, I'm giving it a clean bill of health. Although it looks like mom's spaghetti, minus the sweater. I am a little nervous though. It seems to be working. I got 12 V's into the ballast resistor. That seems to be resisting on the other side. I got 12 V's into the voltage regulator. I got power up to the charging whirler, which is that wire that's chafing and dangerously hanging all the way back there. I got 12 V's into the lightning box over here that makes the juice to shoot up to the thing into the lightning can. And I even tested the ohms on the lightning can here, primary and secondary windings. I mean, they're a little, little off, but it should make, zzz, that's all we need for fire. Now I'm gonna go ahead and roll this thing over. Instead of just jumping in, jamming on the starter, well, for a couple of reasons. One, if you guys have heard me say, 36,912.2 times. I don't want to slam that starter into the, what do we got on this thing here? Flex plate, you know, or break a tab off the engine or bust the start. There's a lot of things that can happen. You could bend valve train. Let's just roll it over by hand, make sure we get 360 degrees out of it. And then we'll jump in and try to start it. The other thing is I'm going to be shooting that mystery oil 47 feet into the air and I don't want to hit this rig back here or that one. Is that a commuter? Wow, wagon. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do, because the flexible lat fan is in the way of the crank bolt, let's go right off of the charger where they're here and I can that way. Well, we hope. The guy barely bumped it and got juice everywhere already. Oh, there we go. She's puking. It's rotating nice and easy. There we go. All over the ground where I got to lay in a minute. Wait, maybe I can roll it forward. There. Now it's going like butter. I'll do this a couple more times. Try to get all of it out of there. And then I'll clean up the fenders. We got some shine juice on the fenders now. Nice. Now a guy will hit it with the starter here. There's still a really good chance we're going to shoot some juice 48 feet in the air. I think that's park. Please work. Oh, yeah. Oh, what a mess. Starter works. Lots of compression, it seems like. I'm going to go ahead and clean this out. There we go. Oof da may, we made a mess. But look how nice that paint looks. The guy gets some shine juice on here. Maybe we clear it or something or use my patented shine juice. 
Okay, starter works, engine is rotating fine, the key works or the ignition lawnmower thing. I think we got lightning. Now we can go ahead and put some sparkulators back in, get the lightning hoses back on this, hit it with a little bit of fuel, and see if it'll actually make some noise. Well, it's time to reverse it. You know, I can't, I can't do that physically, but I'm gonna go ahead and put some new lightning hoses in and sparkulators since we're pretty confident we're gonna have spark out of this system. Sparkulators is in, lightning hoses, made some uh, zip tie separators, tried to clean it up a little bit so they're not just flopping everywhere. Even came in and cleaned up some of the existing wiring and trimmed a bunch out of here. Just started hacking all the little stuff. Still a mess, but a little bit better. And just, even for me, I gotta come in here and clean some of this up. Just a little bit nervous about, you know, the vehicle fires. That ain't fun. And I ain't kidding you. I don't even know that I need that horn, or if it works. We may delete on that in a little bit. But we're to the point now. We can get a little bit of fuel down here and see if this thing's gonna bark off and make a little bit of noise. Just for a second, we'll shut it right down and then we can drop this oil out, change on that, get a new filtre on it, and then see if we can get this cap off goal is to just let it sit here and run for a few minutes let all the gaskets come back around build some oil pressure get oil through the whole engine head gaskets intake gaskets rear main let everything kind of cook in nice and easy speaking of i better check the blood stack on the shift machine oh look at that it's pink okay i didn't did not expect wasn't expecting that. So that's good. Don't want to run it without juice in there. Cook that front pump out of her. Huh. Guy's kind of down on tools, being I flew in. Don't really have a smaller apparatus. Or do I? Probably. Too lazy. Okay, a little bit of gas down the up. That's way, way too much. Perfect. Twist the key, see if this thing will fire off. Come on. Uh oh, it's not turning over. Starter sounds not happy. Roll the engine over a little. There it goes. That was weird. I don't know if that's the starter or this lawnmower switch. Oh, no spark. It's probably what that is. Let me open up the throttle blades a little bit. Huh. It's acting like she wants to go. I don't see any giant vacuum leaks. Maybe a little bit more fuel. There was a lot of oil in there yet. Could take a minute to come back around. Come on now, bring the thunders. Bring it again. There, there. It's trying. There it goes. Yes! All right, she's a runner and a smoker. Bingle Hall Edition Ford. Oh, that makes me so happy. Sun's going down. I got two days of driving and what little light I have left today. I gotta keep moving, keep the feet moving. Let's go ahead and change on the oil. Now that we heard it run, that's all we wanna do. Remember there's water in there. Oof, check the gears, everything else. Lastly, brakes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if we can get this old guy up on our teeth here. Uh, uh. I gotta figure out the processes here. I don't want to bend up the tin on this, and I ain't kidding you. 
Man, it's low to the ground. Not gonna be able to drive this in Michigan. Rip the whole front end off. Okay, what I'm thinking here is, well, I'm not really thinking. What I'm wondering is, can a guy get it under that? No. Well, maybe a block. Let's start there. Could be a 42 step processes here. Okay, that did nothing. That's good. Yeah. Wonder if I went like this on an angle edge. Is this something? I don't know. Just keep going until you hear oil hitting the ground or something bending. This seems to be working better though. That's Mustang 2 front end. Pretty sure, actually. Well, that's pretty neat. Really popular hot rod and thing. And I don't know. When was that? 90s probably. Maybe even still today. Can a guy just leave it like that? Okay. Let's explore a little bit. See if we can figure out the transmission while we're dropping the oil. Well, the guy was finally able to scoot underneath here. Fiberglass reproduction front fenders, original running boards, and uh, some pretty sketchy welding going on under there. It definitely is a Camaro rear end, posi, probably like a 340s to 350s gear. I think it's probably like a 727 transmission is what it's looking like. I can't get all the way under to get a pretty good look at it. It's definitely not electro digital, thank goodness. So that's helpful. I'm uh, gonna go ahead and crawl back under again, drop this oil quick, grab that filter off, and then we'll get this thing fired back up. Oosta. Yeah, that's been on fire before. Ignore that. I mean, it's, there's some work that needs to be had. No, we'll just, you know, pretend we didn't see any of that. Anywho's up here, let's see what we get out. Look at that. I'm really, really hoping that's not head gasket and just water coming down through the carb and unfortunately washing past the rings. Otherwise we got head gasket issues because that is milkshake and I don't need no boys in the yard. For the Earls, gotta go with the old T4. They would do the diesel oils and all the vitamins. Dinosaurs a guy really ought to need spilling everything. Also good news, when I was under there, happened to scan the peepers on the block there and found a casting number. It says it right on there, 318. Google webbed interweb searched up the identification number and it is a tricky little devil. But what I've come to is I can't find the exact year, but it's a late 90s Dodge Dakota pick -em up truck. 318. That's what we got for an engine. Kind of unique. Most people, since the dawn of time, this small block Chevy swap these things. But this is something a little bit different. Now I've got a Hemi swapped C10 and a Mopar swapped 35 Ford. Yes! Nailed it. You know, I'm also going to throw in this Daryl Nemesis Race Bar! I don't know. It says it'll make it do wheelies and stuff. And other things. Put that in there. Drink up, little body. We got a long trip. I'm gonna keep this truck up in the air for now. I think we're gonna be running fuel lines and such. Hello? Hello? No, I think it's empty. I wonder if it was... Well, they're car guys. I bet they winterized this. You know what I mean? Well, do you do that in the South, though? Probably not. But maybe they did. I, I don't know, is what I'm saying. If you'd let me finish my sentence. 
you know? Sorry I yelled. Okay. Oh, it's got water in it. It's like slew water. Doesn't look good at all, if I'm being completely honest. I'm gonna let some of that down. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and put some straight antifreeze in here because we're driving it up into Nashville. And uh, it does get, believe it or not, in the mid 20s, low 30s. So can a guy just be careful, is what I'm saying. I don't know how much is enough. I wonder what Jody Messina is doing today. Okay, boom. Antifreeze says. Engage. Stop spilling so much. Boy, this is gonna take forever. I wonder why they didn't just use the fill reservoir off of a late model pickup for this here setup. I don't know, I guess. Hard to say. Well, it's all going on my belly and not in the radiator. Okay, that's, it's full now. Guy is definitely gonna need the capacitize of the fuel in that thing. But for now, just to hear it run, we're gonna bypass it because all this needs to be re-ran. This is laying on the exhaust, actually. That's, that's neat. So what I'm going to do for now is just use this guy, which is my backup shield jug for the ride home, set it down over here, run a line. I'm going to try to use this mechanical pump that's just hanging out down there. It looks like the current setup was for a uh, digital pump. We're not going to do that. That'll be backup worst case scenarios. So I'm going to run a new piece from here to here which should get us up to the fuel, make it happener. And then this, I'll just run down basically behind the tire or something into the jug. And we'll see if we can get it fired up off of the gas can here. Okay, got a new chunk in there. Guy might could put a filter right there. That'd be a good spot. Uh, I made this excessively long for a few reasons. One, I wanna make sure that that pump is up to the task of pulling fuel through a longer line. Two, I don't want to buy more fuel line. It's not cheap. And that's the length I'm going to need to get back to here and try to, you know, not run it on the exhaust. That would be neat. That's a whole other project we have yet to get to. So let's fire it up again and see if the mechanical pump will pull fuel off of that. And if it does, we can let this thing sit here and run for a few minutes. Here we go now. Bring the thunder. Bring it again. Bring it some more. Bring it. Let's do it again. Here we go again. More flammable liquid. Come on. Oh, it really wants to. We get a little bit of throttle action. Well, I don't think it's pulling fuel yet. Huh. Shall investigate. Well, here's where we're at. I've been cranking on her. Trying to use this mechanical pump. It ain't pumping. I tried to juice up the diaphragm and everything like I usually do. It's, she's dead, dead which makes sense why I was probably routed with a digital one. So I'm gonna quick pop this in line, probably just right up here, just something really super quick, just so we can get this thing fired up and at least running and idling tonight. I wanna to check the gears and make sure it doesn't overheat before the sun goes down. And we got about 45 minutes to an hour-ish. So we gotta hurry. And then tomorrow we will work on fill system and all the other stuffs. NASCAR fuel system here. Uh, just, you know, vice grip the ground to the 
charging whirler, zip tied the fuel pump to that, balancing it off of the manifold, jam this into the alternator wire, boom, fuel pump tested, got fuel there. These are designed to push, not pull, but for now, you know, can it work? That'd be neat. So I'm gonna jam this into here. We'll call that switch on, crank the key again, see if it'll come to life. All right, come on now, you little devil. Boy, it just... Well, ain't that something? Oh, I don't got much squirterage. That's part of the problem. Huh. Adjusting. Adjusting. Can a guy take a peek in here a little bit? Boy, that is crusty. There's nothing leaking up through there. The needle could be stuck closed. Maybe. <sighs> Accelerator pump and pumping. That fill make it happen or major issues. And I was told that, but I just thought maybe it would at least idle. But it's shot. Needs a complete rebuild. I do not have a rebuild kit. Local store does not have one. Well, local, it's actually way yonder. However, Lance actually bought a fill make it happener for when he had the truck, you know, previously and it was sitting on the shelf. <sighs> we'll crack this thing open. I think it came off that jungle website, so you know it's good. See if we could throw this on quick. Okay. Well, this guy is on. Had to reuse some of the expert, you know, vacuum caps. What is that one? Well, that's an existing one. The uh, choke curly Q thing still works even. I already tested it. We got squirter edge action now. I got the throttle spring hooked up, but not the throttle cable yet. So I'm going to run it out here with the Lone Wolf 6000 trigger. Wherever I laid that. Oh, it's over there. See if we can fire it up and then I can modulate it over here. Flip my switch. Click, click. Okay. Fuel. Ignition on. All right. Crying in the mud. Oh, back out the app. There we go, you stubborn devil. All right. That's actually not too bad. I haven't adjusted it at all. A little bit of a lifter tick going on in here, but let's just let it be for a second. Let it warm up, build some oil pressure. I don't have an oil pressure gauge, but you can tell it has oil pressure. You know, yeah, there we go, see? Just gonna let it sit here and idle for a few minutes. 
uh, more like probably 10. We'll be fine. We got fresh gas for a change, by the way. This kept curling up in the jug, so I put some zip ties down a pry bar and just sunk it in the tank. So now I won't do that anymore. This is pretty normal. It's got water in it. You know, it's got fresh oil. Nice and hot, then I'll get in here and adjust the idle circuitry. Speaking of which, oh, she's not even warmed up yet, not even close. Got a mess on the captain's side. Plenty of oil pressure. Brush oil up on the rockers here. Well, she's been idling a while now. The thermostat still doesn't want to open, which is good. Let's keep it cool. I'm going to go ahead and test the shift machine. See if we got to go forward or in backer. Which also means I need to hit the brake pedal because, well, the front end's in the air. I don't want to put the jack to the oil pan. So we're kind of hitting, I don't know, one bird with 12 stones or whatever. Okay, brake pedal. I'll be dipped. Something there. Okay, reverse. Oh yeah, immediately. Neutral. Drive. Firm. Feels like something's. Well, I gotta look at that rear end. It's really just crab walking the second I throw in gear, but. We got a shift machine. I think we might have brakes. They didn't go to the floor anyway. And it's running. What a good day. I'm gonna sit here and stare at this for another 15, 20 minutes till the sun goes down. Go find me a Motel three and a half. And then I'll be back bright and early tomorrow morning with a few more parts. We gotta button this thing up and get on the road. We still have over 600 miles back home. Good morning. A very balmy 37 degrees this morning in Texas. I'll be dipped. Probably a good time to mention, I've only done it a few times. You can get hoodies like this or several other designs or the flannels I always wear or t-shirts or long sleeve shirts or work shirts or long sleeve work shirts or beanie caps or baseball caps or Richardson's or trucker caps or license plates or stickers or keychains or any of the other stuff that you want if you want to you know, show some support and join the VGG Nation, go over to vicegripgarage.com. You can snag yourself some there. I'm trying to get this 1935 Ford home. It's been off the road for years. I got over 600 miles to go. Yesterday, it did bark to life, made a bunch of noise and smoke. We think potentially the brakes might work. At least the pedal's doing something, enough to flex the firewall out three inches. It went in the gear, forwarder and reverser today. I've got to finish this cobbled up fuel system with a temporary system, also known as permanent. And then, what else is there? Oh, I gotta get some tires on this thing, do a final check, pack this thing up, and then I have absolutely got a cannonball home, so it's gonna be interesting. Let's jump in and get this fuel system done here if we can. I don't have a plan, but here's what we're gonna do. First thing, I gotta get this cannulator out. It's bolted in, see what kind of fitting we have going on and whatnot. Then we're gonna rerun this NASCAR fuel line, nice, tight, needy up against the frame rail. I got some DEI foil heat shield wrap. It's good for 500 degrees. 
that'll protect us by the exhaust down here snag it up through here again and uh, another fill tray just like this but we'll put a wix in there of course the pump is going to go down and on the frame rail we want it below the fuel but as close as we can get those clicky clacky it'll brokens are meant to push fuel not pull i also picked up a spare one today because well it's likely to not work by the time we get home then we'll put this tank back in and everything like that as far as wiring goes we'll go hot from the battery of course straight to the pump just now the right way to do this is put a fusible link in here for that pump so i'm not going to do that and then we're going to take the negative and we're going to run this into the cab and i'm probably just going to zip tie it to the column or something i don't want to drill a hole in the dash i know that sounds weird but this you know it's in pretty good shape well actually it's already messed up maybe we will drill a hole but anyway i'm going to be switching the negative so when i flip the switch it's going to contact the ground if you can help it fellers don't be dragging in all the v's and lightnings into the cabin area it doesn't really make sense you know electrical appliances need two things to run positive ground and you can switch either one so that's what I'm going to do, and then uh, we'll try to clean this up. Nope, we'll just, we're going to leave that alone, probably. Uh, I think that's going to do it for the fuel. Well, I got the tank out, or out, up. I don't, it's moved. It's over here now, okay? Just had two bolts. That's it. Safe. Uh, Three-eighths barbed, which is good. So I'm just going to put on a stick, drop that under the truck, and I think I'm going to mount the pump in this frame rail. It's an X pattern. Goes to the center, goes this way. Set it running that fuel line right with the exhaust. We'll head back, kind of right up by the transmission pan. Mount that pump out into here. And that way it's below and it can do the pump things. Fuel system's 100% complete. I did decide just to dangle it over here for now, but if you listen, shh, listen. There's our fuel pump. We can figure out what to do with it later. Right now, I tore the ignition out, and uh, I'm gonna try to figure out at least brake lips. That'd be nice to have. We're going down the highway. Also, I finished the throttle. Vice grip holding the cable on the inside because the cable wasn't long enough I needed it to go forward and I also lost this little cable doodabby that was on the other film that could happen here so I had to borrow this from the inside so right now a vice grips holding that on I do need a stiffer spring it's not wanting to fully you know hits but we'll figure that out later right now I'm gonna figure out the tail lights if I can all right, I put that back together and we'll just pretend I didn't start on that mess. I like the guy that built this truck. Every single wire is black. So, you know, you just, there's, yeah. I'm sure I could figure it out, but I ain't got the time. We need to be on the road. Lights, taillights, yeah. Okay, we got to deal with a suspension piece under here. I saw when I was putting in the fuel pump, it's actually pretty terrifying. Let me show you this. So how this particular rear end works is these bar do hippies right here is what keeps this rear end in place essentially. Without these bars, we just run over the axle, right? Well, it's in here putting the fuel pump in and look at this nut right here. It's got about a thread on it and there's washers behind here. So the guy put it in like this and allegedly was driving it, I don't know. But if that bolt comes out, these arms drop and the rear end just tears out of this thing and pulls the drive shaft at the same time. So I'm gonna take that nut off, take some washers out, put some never come off juice in there and tighten that thing back down quick while I got the truck in the air. There we go, got that snugged up. It looks a little bit better. Got some never come off juice in there. The rest of it seems fairly tight, so sure, we'll call that good. Went ahead and topped off the brake juice. It was uh, pretty full actually. The rear was down about halfway, but 
juice in it, which means there's no leaks in the system. That's great news. So hopefully, you know, other than this, that's fine. Finally time to get some rubber on this thing. Just gonna pop these caps off, take the fronts off, throw the jack under the rear axle, bust those off. I'm gonna try to take all four into town at the same time. Boy, this side only had uh, two lug nuts on and you could tell it was that way when they did the Craigslist rebuild on it. That's pretty spooky. And then, uh, you know, she's been sat up a while. Terrible condition. So we're gonna leave them. We're gonna let the pads just resurface those for us, I think. Don't even start looking at the brake lines on this thing. It just, yeah. Okay, so gonna load all these up and head into town. By the way, look at this rig. A subscriber and fan named Keith rented this to me because I couldn't find a pickup truck out of Dallas Fort Worth that was open at 11 o'clock and that I could leave here. What a nice rig. So thank you, Keith. Really, really appreciate it. Honestly, couldn't be doing this revival without you. I know you guys are tired of hearing me say this, but the car community and the Vice Grip Garage community is just amazing. Great, great people. Appreciate all of you. Well, as you can see, the new tires are on the 35 and it looks fantastic. Completely changed the look of the truck. And I didn't put poverty caps on for a couple of reasons. One, it's a complete set. I don't want to lose them going down the road. Two, I don't like them. I just don't like them. I'm sorry. I said it. This is kind of the look that I'm going for right here. Now, I could easily, honestly spend an entire day tinkering on this thing. We've still got missing nuts and bolts and wiring and multiple fire hazards, and it's super sketchy. I'm very comfortable in saying an old timer must have built this truck, got her about 95% of the way, and then for whatever reason sold it, and these guys picked it up here. It's just, it's not there, but I don't have the time. I have scheduling conflicts and obligations I gotta get to. So we just gotta start getting miles under our belt and I'll tanker on it as I go, or at least that's the plan anyway. Got the rear all loaded up. The other two tires that Evil Bay lost for 39 days, of course, just showed up, threw them in the back. So I guess we got spare rubber for the front. Got my tools, got a spare water pump, a couple other parts and pieces, some gas lines, zip ties, duct tape, electrical digital parts. What else do we need? Nothing, let's go. First stop is fuel station. That's about 200 yards. So if a guy can make it 200 yards, can he make it, you know, 600 plus miles? Yeah. Starter doesn't work. There we go. Yet. By the way, I did miss this earlier. Gene Winfield signed this truck in 2017. That is really neat. Well, 
Let's jam this thing on the highway, see how she does, get as far as we can before sundown because, well, I ain't got no lights. There's so much stuff swirling in here and smoke. Also, the sticking throttle is convenient. It's like cruise control. All right. Made it a mile or so. Had a bunch of coolant on the. Oh, the caps of this. Uh oh. We got a milkshake. Very not good. Oh no. That is the worst thing to see right now. Oh. Wow. Well, luckily I was carrying a head gasket with me, so I put that in quick. And that's probably gonna do nothing, but we're gonna try it. So that's on. Let's see if we can go a few more miles, let that do its thing. Gonna put some fresh oil in it again. It's not getting hot. So it's gonna be a matter of how bad do we wanna take the bearings out of this thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Made it uh, 37 more feet. Transmission slipper. Oh, and we're at like 205. So I went ahead and put new clutches on the transmission, and by that I mean snake oil. So let's still continue, continue to head east. Okay. Well, as expected, she's getting real hot again. I'm gonna go ahead and take the hood off, I think. Try to get some more wind through here. That is a small wrap, too. We can't forget that. And a small fan. So I'm gonna toss that hood back here somewhere and try to get some wind through it. I'm just on some back road right now, trying to make it to Texarkana. Oh. Yep down to one jug of antifreeze slash coolant and uh, pulled myself into a beautiful looking cattle farm but ain't no one around. I don't want to enter their buildings or nothing but I might uh, try to find a hose bed or there's got to be a cattle feeder around here somewhere. Water is what I'm saying. That's what I'm after. Fill those jugs up. I'm still a good, ah, there we go. Still a good 60 miles from Texarkana. Hello? Got them cross country riding machines out there. Oh yeah, I'm sure they wouldn't mind. So being I know I got water here, I'm gonna completely drain the entire system flush it, check the oil again, top that off, and just keep keep going, you know, everything's fine. Look how nice of an evening it is. Just gotta drink it up, fellas. Well, we've all heard Texas doesn't mess around when it comes to mosquitoes. Check this out. Oh, okay. Well, I tried to test run it here. It's got a fresh water in it and it's still heating up really quick. I don't like how long this thermostat's hanging on before it starts circulating. That's part of the issue. I can get it down to 100 degrees and if I could take off and we're already circulating, maybe it'll stay cooler. It's hit and miss. 
Sometimes you run hotter with one, sometimes you run hotter without one. But we're going to have to find out. Don't have a gasket, of course, but we'll cross that bridge when the donkey runs. Or whatever that saying is. Well, that's not good news. It doesn't have a thermostat. Are we not circulating? Well, that wasn't helping. Here's an easy way to tell. Let's fire it up and watch that. And if the pump is doing pump things, it should gush out of there. Well, we are officially out of time. Sun has set. I messed around all I could here. Um, I got to get closer to a parts store. I don't mind sleeping in the truck, but we're going to need to try something potentially here. And I got no headlights, so we're going to have to just hit the road, take her easy. Consistency or something like that. I don't know. Insert smart words. Here we go again. Made it into some small town here. No motels, no parts store, but I got a bunch of light under this laundromat here. Arms getting cold driving with the cell phone lying out the window. So passerbys and all that, there's something, bicycle or motorcycle, or 35 Ford truck. Don't like that, don't like that at all. Not so much for me, but the safety of others. So, I think, what did I just step on, styrofoam? Anyway, I gotta try to figure out these head lifts. I got a little bit of wire left from the fuel pump. I might just direct wire it, not worry about switches or anything like that for tonight. At least get, you know, one headlight. I think that's a song. Probably not. Anyway, guys got this chased up here. This was the one that I pulled out earlier today and I remembered it was there. Threw my test light on it. And sure enough, once I juice that up, I got power. I'm hoping this one just twisted together as a ground, which means this one should be power, which also goes into here for a switch. So I'm gonna cut that, touch it to this, and hopefully, boop, boop, light. Well, I'll be dipped. That one's a little long in the tooth. This will, you know, he's a little spry, but that's, uh, that's legal. I'm gonna wrap some paper on that and sit the road. Made it to some motel three and a half, rolled in at about 220 degrees. It was doing really good and then it started slowly creeping up again. It's about 26 miles per overheat, approximately. Haven't looked at the fuel yet. Transmission is still slipping. Uh, quite a bit of work to do on this thing, gotta be honest, but none of that matters right now it's getting late i gotta call the boys say good night to them and there's a steakhouse within walking distance so i'm gonna go wet the back neck chew on some red meat get a few hours of sleep find a parts store and get back on this thing bright and early tomorrow morning good morning the 35 still here that's pretty neat it's actually kind of hard to steal unless you know you have the same exact lawnmower key that a rally sells for everything so anyway, today is the day. Got to figure out what to do with this truck. The transmission is slipping. Not too worried about that because it gets into high gear and at 50, 55, this thing is a handful. It's like riding a wicker basket in a field. It's 
it's not good. You're not really, you're just along for the ride. That's what I'm saying. The overheating every 22 miles and water getting into the oil, that's kind of an issue being I've got well over 500 miles left. Now I parked here for a couple of reasons, steak and also a parts store right there. So we're gonna fire this up, just ease it right over to the parts store. I've already called them, they're scrambling, they're trying to get stuff pulled out. See what we can come up with as far as parts and then make a plan if we try to keep dumping snake oil in this thing, just change the oil, try to nurse it, look at cooling options or tear this thing all the way down. We'll have to wait and see. Cold start this morning, maybe. I probably could replace the starter. Wow. I mean, it wants to run. It's just, you know, doesn't want to stay cool. Let it warm up. Ran out of gas. I made it that far. It's pretty good. That's why I carry this five gallon. Boy, the fuel mileage is not good. So I think here's the plan fillers. I got a, O'Reilly's next door. I'm at a quick change oil place here. Instead of buying a low profile jack and jack stands to drop this oil, I'm gonna have these guys do it because it'll be, what is it, 45.99? And that part's done. It was interesting this morning because the radiator was full, although the dipstick is showing me moisture in the crankcase. So I don't know if some of that was residual, the water getting in it before. Um, could have a cracked head, could be a cracked block. So it's gonna be interesting to see. So what I'm trying to figure out here is maybe the magic bottle fix stuff did something. And it's just getting hot because it's got a small radiator and a tiny little flexible light fan that's probably not doing much because keep in mind it was heating up slow. Usually when a head gasket's gone, it's bam, hot. My fear is I spend the day tearing into this and put head gaskets in it and that wasn't the issue. So I'm trying to kind of methodically go through this here. Yes, I can get a bunch of tools and do leak down tests and radiator pressure tests and blah 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 but we ain't got the time nor the vehicle to be driving all over town to get all these tools to see what's going on here i could maybe see if o'reilly has a leak down test i guess but let's start with getting some fresh oil on this thing i already need to rebuild this let's try to save on the bearings just sitting here pondering been here 1094 times the way that it's not drinking water or smoking and the plugs are still pretty clean. I'm kind of thinking it's something like a lifter belly crack. It's obviously getting water in the oil, but it's slow. So I'm gonna try sauce first. I'm gonna try to pick up some gaskets just in case, but unfortunately, I really think it's gonna be a crack. I don't think it's gonna be a, a gasket. It's not acting like that. I'm not getting pressure in the rad either. So, I think it might be a waste. I'll have to wait and see, I guess. But I'm really leaning towards a crack. Let's get some sauce. We'll try that first. Well, we got head gaskets, intake gasket, nothing else. We could probably make it work. Picked up a uh, cooling fan just in case and a water pump. Uh, got some K seal. I actually just got off the phone with the Dulcich himself because he's an LA engine whisperer and he said K-Seal is the way to go and we're in agreement that it's probably a crack block like a lifter valley or something like that unfortunately. So I'm gonna drain this water out, recycle on that, throw some K-Seal on this thing, some fresh water, oil is good, of course we just had that changed. Another new fill tray on there. Snake oil going into the shift machine. I decided to put the hood back. Last night I took it off, but it was like, with the wind speed, 
You know, I'm not a pilot, but a headwind and whatnot, actual air temperature was about minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe a little bit colder than that. Didn't really do anything anyway. But I'm thinking if I put the hood back on, maybe that acts more like a shroud because it's going to force what air comes in to actually just sit on that engine instead of just blowing right through. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. You know what I mean? No idea where I'm at. It's way late in the morning. We should be on the road already. But I found an O'Reilly's like 40 miles-ish, I think, east of here. We're going to try all this snake oil, aim towards that O'Reilly's. If it hasn't improved, tear down time. Maybe. I don't know. Well, anything and everything that could have snake oil or additive or slick this and snake juice that, it's in there. So let's ease on down the highway, see what we got. Toes crossed, even the big one. them new Corvettes? Maybe. I don't know. Black wheels seem to be the choice there. Yeah, still running hot. So that's fine. Hanging in the 205 to 210-ish range. Fueled up again. Starting to wonder if this radiator is, well I know it's also an issue. Really small for a V8. There's more of them. What is going on around here? So, I'm going to check all the fluids here, see if we're eating water yet, or if it's still holding. Check the oil. I don't know. Transmission seems to be uh, shifting a little bit better with that juice in there, believe it or not. See if these guys will let me fill my jugs back up before I hit the road. Made it to another small town. Check this out. All be dipped. The K block, case, K seal, I think. <laughs> I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but knock on wood, I think it sealed. It did the thing. It's still running a little hot though. And uh I think I'm going to take the hood off again. It's getting warmer out. Drain some of this old stuff out again. Put some more water, 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 water in there. Keep on cruising. I'm about 45, 50 miles. I'm just trying to get as far east as I can. Because that is doing its thing very quickly. Also going to crawl under it quick, do a nut and bolt check. Check all the lugs, everything like that. Like I said before we left, I think this is the farthest this truck's ever gone. So essentially we're probably shaking it down right now. Just did a fuel calculation on here. And from my last stop, I'm up to 19.6 miles to the gallon. Big swing. Must be getting the cobwebs worked out of her, I guess. I'm also uh, putting some Byron right in the tank here. Actually gonna go two cans really make her choke this down. Normally I do the Italian tune-up right down the yap, but this is running out of time. This is just as effective. It's just a slower dose over time. If any of those plugs are fouled up from, you know, water or coolant or snake juice or oil or whatever throughout this journey here, this will bring them right back around. All right, next stop, 78 miles this way.
sun is starting to go down. You know, look at this cool gas pump. I don't know, was that 80s? Something like that? Some old abandoned station. Anyway, I got, you know, this. I gotta fix that, I guess. And I'll probably stop at the next town to see if I can get a new light bulb for that. And, uh, you know, it'd be nice to see the road. Really old school lift here. My dad had a couple of these. Somewhere there'd be a hydraulic lever, like on a tractor. Oh, here. Be sure this would have been the old up and downs. There's just a big post goes in the ground. Pretty neat. I don't know what town this is, but it's quaint. Yeah, I could live here. Got that. Headlight fixed, replaced her with a, I don't know what it is. Salvanias Lightning Store. It's different than that one, obviously, but it'll work. I just, I can't believe that KCL actually worked. It's working right now. It's actually staying, it's getting better. It's staying around 160 degrees now that it's cold out. So I'm just going to keep my foot in it. I think everything is pretty much sorted at this point. So I'm just going to keep heading east, stop every 150 miles for fuel, and uh, it's going to be early, early tomorrow morning when I get there, but let's see if we can make it. starting to break up a little bit. Shut it off and either the charging motor stopped charging or the starter finally died because it ain't start. Bought a set of jumper cables. Made friends with the maintenance guy here. Real nice guy. He's going to get the maintenance truck. We're going to try to jump start this quick. Of course every parts store is closed. So that's fine. Yeah. There she went. She was running. So, uh, this guy ain't doing the thing. It did start running there for a minute, so good thing I bought that other charger where they're gonna quick swap that out. Have to go find this gentleman again and get another jump start, I guess. Yeah, all right. in the morning found a parts store it was open really late still wasn't charging and uh, found the issue well there was two issues these newer alternators ground by the there's a ground lug on here 371 I think ground by the case for the engine it's different here so a engine ground is really important. Remember this battery just goes straight to the frame. So I added this and then the old voltage regulator was bad. Added that and a ground from the firewall to the engine. So everything is now doing that. Look how bright the headlights are now. So I think I'm good to keep on trucking here.
Good morning. Day, I don't know. All I know is I'm late, okay? What a night. Stopped about three this morning, a handful of hours ago or less. Boy, loud, noisy, couldn't see nothing. Eyes are bad, you know, can't drive at night. Significantly below freezing in the cab, way down there. But what got me is I finally got a little bit, you know, I guess what most people call tired. I call it weak. So I gave in, you know. We are gonna have to absolutely lean on this thing today. By the time I get home, it's gonna be a quick shower, repack my bags and leave again. Like 45 minute kind of deal, if we don't break down. So what I'm gonna do quick this morning is change the oil on the old rig again, because one, I wanna make sure that somehow miraculously the K seal sealed thing, still mine bottled about that. Two, the sealant, if water was getting in the oil, obviously the sealant's in the oil. And we're gonna need the viscosities today. So we're gonna put some fresh oil, new filter in this thing. So I can really, you know, we're gonna go from 50, 55 to 65 fellers, 70, if I can hang on to the steering wheel on this thing. So I have to try to make up some time and get home by this afternoon. So I think I got all the fixes on the truck. Just gonna back up, get this thing on the ramps, get this done. Gotta fix this too. About ready to lose the charging whirler belt. Also, when I added this ground, I guess it was early this morning, I gotta add a zip tie or something to this. Keep it off the exhaust down there. Oil change complete. It looked pretty good. It was definitely, you know, I had a, just a little bit of water or something. I still had viscosity, but I'm glad I went ahead and changed it. Gave her some more Rotella. I'm a quart short, but when I stopped to get fuel on this thing, they always have, you know, the Lucas oil stabilizer on the shelf. So I'll throw that in here. Thicken it up even more. I got a lifter clacking in here. Uh, getting pretty noisy actually but there wasn't any metal in the oil which is fantastic so I think uh, I just got to tighten this belt we'll be on the road they had a one exit that's pretty good you know to start the day I uh, went from 160 to 2.45 in about three seconds. I think I lost a belt of water pump. Let's check it out. Oh. Yep. Well, I just put this on there even. Huh. Hopefully an easy fix. Excuse me, but now we got to figure out why that's coming off all of a sudden. All of a sudden is a prepositional phrase. This is going to surprise you with how astutely this rig is built. You know, like the socket as a space here. A good three quarter and all this stuff that, see this front pulley normally aligns with that pulley. But to make this work, the front pulley runs on the rear pulley, but the anglage is off. So now I gotta try to fix that. I think I'm gonna jam a pry bar in here, push pull, see if I can get her twist, but I gotta be careful because I got 12 volts right here. And yes, that's the cap to my gas can as a protector. <sighs> Look at the color of the trees though. Beautiful this time of year. Starting to get some yellers, some orange. Uh oh. That ain't good. And I don't have another one. Perfect. Well, the cause of the issue is that bracket is broken. So this thing just completely flops around. I got the belt back on, but. It snapped. So, 
Here's our next challenge. Well, a guy just Ubered into town, got me a belt. So, back down to the truck down there. See if we can figure this out. Ain't got a welder. We're gonna have to get a little bit hillbilly redneck of MacGyverish. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I got her whipped, you know. Listen, if it works, it's really a dumb idea. So what a guy's got here is, well, first of all, had to reband the bend, get that right. Two big washers in there, so it has something to bite to. One hose clamp around here to keep this pinched, and then another hose clamp around the adjusting bolt over the top of the bracket, angled over here to keep this engaged so it doesn't slip out. And then this is a rusty nail I found on the side of the road to keep the clamp from walking off of the stud. But what we got is a new tight belt. I'll be dipped. Go ahead and snug this up. We'll fire it up and see if it stays on. The great news is the engine ought to be cool by now, you know? Overheated again, couldn't see out of the windshield, so stopped. I'm gonna try something different here, just to make absolutely sure I don't have any air trapped in the system. I'm gonna pull this out, and when I fill it, we're gonna fill it until it comes back out of that port, and it'll push all of the air out of that, pop that back in. We'll be good to go. I got four gallons, so we'll flush it a little bit more too. Water's getting a little clearer, but still getting some stuff out with all that pressure. I need to find a parts store and get a different cap. This cap is leaking. It shouldn't be. And uh, that's also contributing to not only the heating issue, but not seeing. hot in the uh, engine there. So I got that little sensor out of there. And, uh, well, I guess it's auto magically flushing and cleaning the windshield. That's pretty good. What a week full of chaos and adventure, but the Mopar powered Ford got us home. I was a little bit nervous there a couple times, but goes to show you fellers and fellettes with a little bit of, you know, patience and a Scotia perseverance, you could do just about anything you set your mind to. Now is your favorite part and mine. I need you to bleep bloop down into the comments section what we do with this rig. I mean, do we have a rat rod shop truck, do some lettering on it, just keep it? Do we engine swap it to a Ford, maybe a Chevrolet, paint it, leave it? Interior, tires, wheel, I don't, I don't know. As artists say, it's an open palais. I think T's silent or something like that. But do me a favor, get off your hind end, get outside or get in the garage and just get to work on your project. You don't got to finish it. Just do some, take the stuff off the roof for starters and just start on the thing, okay? And while you're at it, if you want to support adventures like this, please swing over to vicegripgarage.com, grab yourself something. I certainly appreciate that. Thank you for watching very, very much. We'll see you next time.